Today we are at a home garden just outside of Walters, Oklahoma in southwestern Oklahoma. And joining us is Andrea Ballard. And Andrea, your garden is beautiful. And I have to say, I think this was the year for cool season crops. What have you found? I think you're right. They, they've, they're a little bigger than they usually get and everything looks really well and they're growing really well. So, so. tell us a little bit about what all you have in the garden here. Well, uh, we've got green cabbage and broccoli and some red cabbage, uh, some cauliflower, um, and Brussels sprouts, which is a first for me this year. I've never tried to, to grow Brussels sprouts, but they're doing well. Yeah. Um, I've got onions and lettuce and beets and uh, a salad mix. And then I've started my peppers and my tomatoes uh, for the summer garden also already. So. Yeah, so some of your, um, your cabbage and, and, and broccoli, it looks like you're doing in kind of segments here. Can you tell us a little bit about your planting method? I tried the square foot gardening method this year, which is one plant per square foot. Seems a little crowded to me, so probably next year I'll spread it out maybe one per two, okay. uh, just to give the plants a little bit more room. Um, it's It seems to be working okay as far as um, size and, and everything, but I will move my cabbage to the outside row so it's not shaded over by the leaves of the of the bigger yeah, plants. Yeah, the other one's kind of kind of took over there out a little bit. Yeah. Looks like so. I mean, you've got. I mean, this broccoli, for instance, right here. It looks like it's ready to harvest. And some of your cabbage as well. Or? Yes. Um, in fact, probably tomorrow we'll be harvesting some of the bigger heads of broccoli. Um, we've got some pretty good sized heads of cauliflower over there that need to come out. And then some of the heads of cabbage also need to come out. And we'll blanch those and freeze those and actually put those in the freezer oh, okay. Uh, okay. to use all winter. So a little bit about, I mean, a lot of times we think about gardening come April and, and May, but when did this go in the ground? I mean, tell us a little bit about all the prep and, and getting this cool season uh, garden started. Well, prep started in February. Mm -hmm. um, I did the first round with the, the tillers and, and turned the dirt in February. Um, late February, we pushed uh, our organic cow fertilizer onto the garden. And, um, and then the 1st of March, I had a lady that had a tractor tiller and she came and, and laid me some nice beds and tilled the, 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 the fertilizer in. And uh, so that was already. Most of the plants um, went in March 14th. Um, the onions went in about a week before that because I got them a week before and they needed to get in the ground rather than stay out. So. Yeah, yeah it's, so, it's, it's yeah. about capturing that. Sometimes it's not so nice to get out in the garden, but that's really when you got to get these plants out there. Yeah, it, and actually we were lucky, you know, uh, weather after the big freeze in February, everything was, uh, the weather was pretty nice uh, to be out in March. Right. Um, then, of course, we had the, the late cold weather, but... Um, with cool season, I wasn't worried about yeah, that. Yeah, that's too much, kind of so. prolonged, I think, and allowed those heads mm -hmm. to develop more to with get the bigger. cooler temperatures. And it's been cooler, and we've had um, we've had a pretty wet March and uh, April so far, so and into May. Yeah. And I think it's fixing to get wetter. <laughs> so you've got your warm season out. Um, tell yep. us a little bit. I, I noticed your tomatoes behind you there. You've put them in mineral buckets, but they are actually planted in the soil. They are. Um, the, the bottoms are cut out and then they're stuck down in, in the soil. And the main reason I do it is out here, like you can tell, the wind blows. It's Oklahoma. <laughs> the wind blows. Um, so I use it for protection uh, mainly when they're little, when okay. the plants are small. This weekend the plan is if we can do it before the rain to get cages put on them and, and pull the tubs oh, okay. and uh, go ahead and get them caged up and then get them mulched and uh, ready for summer. But mainly it's for protection and uh, I was lucky enough to um, get uh, the mineral tubs with lids uh -huh. and during the, the early spring when I put these in, because these went in on March 14th also, so they went through the cold weather, the cold snap in April, all of my plants did. Okay. Um, of course they're getting a little big for it now, um, but you can just pop that lid and put the brick on it and you have a mini greenhouse so it protects them from cold weather and, and hail. I've used it to be hail protection. Thunderstorm, they're saying yeah. hail's coming and I'll run out and grab all the lids and put them on top of so it to protect it's it. Not, so it's not for long-term growing greenhouse, but it no. gives it through that it gets evening it through hours the, or yeah, the hail Yeah, it gets storm. it through the frost yeah. or the hail storm. That's a or, really you know, great idea. Um, and a lot of the times in the dark, I'll come out because I know it's supposed to get warm enough that they don't need to be in the greenhouse through the day. So, you know, before I go to work in the morning, mm -hmm. before, before daylight, I'll come out and pull them off and 
Well, Andrea, I know you do a lot of cooking as well. And uh, tell me a little bit, though, why you got into gardening and what you do then with all of this. You mentioned that you were going to freeze some of your, your produce so that you can continue. I know you do some canning as well. Um, but is that why you garden, or, or how did you get started? We've always we've always had a garden. Um, some of my you know younger memories are um, with my mom's mom and dad, my grandpa and Granny Hooker. Um, he, they always had a huge garden, and we would always, there was a big uh, tree that was outside of their house, and I remember we'd, we'd, you know, pick all the corn, and everybody would sit around, the ants, and every, all the kids would sit around, and we'd shut corn under the trees, so, you know, we grew up, I swore I'd never grow a potato again after one, one year, <laughs> he planted an acre terrace in potatoes, and we got to, you know, pick all of those up and put them in the storage. So a lot, a lot of, of potatoes. yeah, a lot of potatoes. So us kids were like, no, I don't want to do <laughs> potatoes. But um, so we've always, you know, always had a garden when we were we were younger, and then um, this has been our garden spot here for a long, long time. In the '80s, it was uh, pig pens actually was here, and um, then my dad decided that he wanted a garden. So um, and his parents also always had a garden uh, on. So just kind of comes in the family right. and then when dad passed away in 13 I told mom I said well I'll take over the garden <laughs> so I took over the garden and and here we are and so I do can a lot we we did a lot of freezing last summer and we did a lot of pickles and we did uh, we did some squash relish and used up the squash and that turned out really well so I do can but we like I said we froze a lot last year just because it was a little bit easier, and some things freeze a little better than than other things do. So we used the cabbage that we froze last year all through the winter in soups and stews, and mm -hmm. and even steamed some of it because we we cut it in wedges and blanch it and then freeze it. So it's in you know big chunks. A, big yeah. chunks so um, and then broccoli, of course, we have a, a vacuum seal and we blanch it and vacuum okay. seal and and put it in in the freezer so you're for able to eat the the garden goods all winter long that all way. winter long and the things that don't keep or can well we supply the as we call it the farm hood <laughs> um, we have lots I have lots of little ladies here and neighbors and uh, so they you know we we deliver to their porches and and that's the kind of mom's job she'll uh she'll say okay we need to get rid of some of this and i said well okay go on delivery so <laughs> she'd take it to the ladies we got some ladies in town um i take it to work um and just kind of put it on a table and say it's yours you know well your garden is beautiful and obviously very productive so i i imagine that all of your friends appreciate your talent and your green thumb as well. They do and, and sometimes it's um, okay we're locking the door because we don't want anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah they really do. They, they enjoy getting it and especially the, the older uh, neighbors that we have that can't do it anymore and they used to garden so right. they, they really enjoy getting the fresh produce and, and things. So Well thank you for sharing your garden with us. Oh, you're very welcome. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.